Good morning, chemistry students. It's me, Mr. Cheney, with another brilliant tutorial. This one, I'm going to walk you through the Savas eText vocabulary annotation process. This is our very first one, and it's from Experience One in the textbook. So here is where it's at in Google Classroom. You're going to see it right here in the textbook vocab section. It's called eText Introduction to Energy. So when you click on that, you're going to see a link that takes you to the textbook. If there's still some setting up to do, I'll help you through that process. But once you click on this, you should, it should take you right to the textbook. So here's the very first page of the first section called Introduction to Energy. And that's what we're going to go through today. Now, the only thing that we're going to be doing is vocab annotations. Annotations meaning we're marking up the textbook. And in this case, it's digital because we don't have that actual physical textbook in front of us. So this is how it works out. So we're gonna go through each page and again, literally you're looking for blue vocabulary words. So on this very first page, there isn't one. So we're gonna go to next. And now we have found some. So on page two, under the heading of de definitions of energy, this is where we're gonna start. So we're gonna be circling blue words and we're gonna be highlighting the definitions of the blue words. So here's how it works. If we wanna know what the definition is, we can click on energy and it's gonna tell us the capacity to move, do work, change matter, or produce heat. So I can highlight the definition and I'm gonna pick green for my highlights, highlighted definitions and I'm gonna circle the vocabulary words. So you're, with your mouse, you're gonna highlight and you're gonna click circle and that is how we do our annotations. So energy is the capacity to move, do work, change matter, or produce heat. Energy can be hard to define because it takes many different forms and can do many different things. So potential energy is the energy stored within a system. So if I wanted to make sure that's what it was, I can click on the word, the energy stored in the system, very good. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna highlight and then I'm going to circle the blue vocabulary word like so. Um, every substance has a certain amount of energy stored inside of it. So matter is made of atoms that are often bonded together. The energy stored in chemical bonds is known as chemical potential energy. So energy stored in the chemical bonds of a substance. So I'm going to highlight energy stored in chemical bonds. So I can highlight that and then I'm going to circle my vocabulary word. I like to use two different colors, like so. The energy stored in the nuclei of atoms is nuclear energy. Gravitational and elastic are two other types of potential energy. So now we're on to kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is the energy of an object's motion. So energy of an object's motion. And I will highlight that. And then I'm going to circle the word kinetic energy. And as with potential energy, there are several types of kinetic energy. Electrical energy can be a form of kinetic energy through the motions of charged particles. Thermal energy is the total kinetic energy possessed by all of the individual vibrating particles that make up an object. So we're gonna talk about thermal energy a lot because of all the food and cooking stuff that we're gonna be doing. Uh, there are other forms of energy as well, such as electromagnetic radiation, which includes microwaves, x-rays, and visible light. So here's a really good example of the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy. So if you were to stretch out a rubber band, that is stored energy. It hasn't done anything yet, but it's stored energy, so potential energy. And then when you let the rubber band go and it moves the movement, that's kinetic energy. Okay, so we're gonna scroll all the way down just to make sure we got all the blue words and we did on this page, so we'll move on. And on this page, there is no blue vocabulary words. There's just units of energy. So definitions of units of energy. So we have joules and we'll go all through all of this in a different lecture, but we've got joules and we've got calories and we've got, you know, thousand calories, little C versus capital C. Um, we're going to be talking all, about all of that in a little bit. So, but there's no blue words. So we're going to go to next. And on this page, we're talking about energy flow and transformations. So unlike matter, energy does not have mass or volume. So you can only detect energy because of what it does. If you apply a force to a stationary object by pushing it, then energy has been transferred from you to the object. So you can't see the energy, but you can calculate it. So kinetic energy 
is half of mass times volume squared and gravitational potential energy is the acceleration of gravity which is this number here times the height so we have some blue words here that we need to circle and highlight so i'm going to click on thermal chemistry and it's going to say the study of changes in energy during chemical reactions and changes in state so the study of energy changes in heaven during chemical reactions and changes in state i'm going to highlight and then i'm going to circle my thermal chemistry and circle the blue word Okay, so moving on. In chemical reactions, substances change to other substances with a different amount of chemical potential energy. So you can detect those energy changes by observing heat transfer work or a combination of both. So heat is energy that transfers from one object to another because of a temperature difference between the objects. So if I click on heat, it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to highlight. And so it is energy that transfers from one object to another because of temperature difference between the objects. So I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to highlight this and circle it. Heat is the vocabulary word. And I'm going to go down and there's no more blue words so I'm going to click next. And now on this page we have two words. We have power and heat flow. So I'll click on power, the rate of energy flow measured in watts. So the rate of energy flow is going to be my definition and my vocabulary word is power and it's measured in watts. A watt is equivalent to one joule per second or one kilogram meter squared, blah, blah, blah. You may be familiar with power from using electricity. So light bulbs are described by the number of watts of electrical power they use, but power is used to describe the flow rates for all energy transformations. So heat flow is the rate at which heat moves from one object to another. So I'm gonna highlight that. We're gonna talk about heat flow a lot, especially because of the cooking stuff that we're gonna do. So here's heat flow, circle, okay. And then this just kind of describes, you know, power from water and how a larger uh, waterfall that is higher, it has more water flow, is gonna have greater heat flow or just energy flow. Okay, so there's no more blue words to go, so we'll go to next. And the law of conservation of energy. So I'm gonna click on this. And it's any chemical or physical process, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Okay, so I'm gonna go energy is neither created nor destroyed. And it is the law of conservation of energy that I want to circle. So the key here is when energy is transferred or transformed from one system to another in any physical or chemical process, all the energy can always be accounted for. So I'm going to just read through this because it's going to explain that. Sometimes the transfer of energy is hard to see, especially in the case of friction. Take a book and drop it on the floor. The gravitational potential energy that the book had before it was dropped is transformed to kinetic energy of motion as the book falls. But what happened to the energy when the book hit the floor? All of the kinetic energy of the book transformed into frictional heat of the floor, air, and book, and some amount of sound energy. So if you could add up all the final frictional and sound energy would equal the gravitational potential energy the book started with. So that's why they say the energy is not created or destroyed. It, it all adds up at the end. So I'm going to scroll down, make sure there's no more blue vocabulary. So I'm going to move on. And we have the word temperature here on page on this page. So temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in matter. So measure particles of material, highlight that, and I'm gonna circle the word temperature like so. And if you heat an object by transferring energy to it, the atoms will vibrate more vigorously and its temperature will increase. And here's the different types of scales. We'll talk about these in length later, but basically you have Celsius, zero degrees is the freezing point of water, 100 degrees is the boiling point of water, and then the one that we're more familiar with is Fahrenheit, so 32 degrees Celsius, or sorry, Fahrenheit to freeze water, and then 212 degrees Fahrenheit to boil water. So again, no more blue words on that page. We'll go to next. And I believe this is our last vocabulary word. It is, so specific heat. So the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin. So, let's see, the amount of energy right here. The amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of material by one degree is called, so I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna highlight, and then my 
word is specific heat and the circle. And that is it. That is your annotations for the first section, Introduction to Energy. Once you have all of those annotated, you, this will be blue for you. You're gonna click Turn In. And on Google Classroom, once you do that Turn In button, I'll see that you've turned it in and I can go and check your annotations. I'll grade it and that's it. So, I will put this video on Google Classroom as a tutorial, but I'll also play it live in class as we go along. And that should do it for our annotations for today. I will see you back in class.